Hello everybody and welcome. This week saw an interesting development regarding the James Webb Space Telescope. The mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, has been cooled down to its operational temperature of below 7 Kelvin. That in itself is already remarkable and if you wonder why, I would ask you to watch the video I did exclusively on the cooling solution developed for Webb. Link up top or in the description. It's really fascinating what went into this. But today we're not going to talk about the engineering behind MIRI. Instead, I thought reaching that temperature milestone is a good opportunity to talk about what new science Webb might deliver to us with this instrument as soon as NASA gives the go-ahead for regular operations. A quick refresher. The James Webb Space Telescope is the largest observatory mankind has ever put into space. Not only that, it is also the most powerful infrared telescope, which makes sense since Webb wants to look at the origins of the universe, among other things. And that old light has redshifted into the infrared spectrum due to the universe expanding. I have more details on that in a previous video I made when JWST released its first stunning image. Again, you can watch that by clicking up here or follow the link in the video description. Sorry for referring you to different content, but I don't want to bloat this video unnecessarily for people that are already a bit familiar with these topics. There are four instruments aboard the vehicle. The near-infrared camera NearCam, which already gave us the first image I just talked about. Then there's the near-infrared spectrograph NearSpec, the fine guidance sensor near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph FGS Nearis, and as already mentioned, MIRI. So what will these instruments show us and when? Well, the when is depending on NASA. Webb is still in its commissioning phase after launching in December 2021. The process was expected to take roughly six months, so we are still well within that time frame. To find out what Webb is going to be used for, we can turn to the website of the Space Telescope Science Institute. Stasi, 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 that sounds a bit like Stasi, oddly fitting for a device spying into the deepest corners of the universe. Anyways, on said website you can browse hundreds of proposals scientists have committed for observation time on Webb's instruments during its first year of science, called Cycle 1. The programs are split into the General Observer Program, GO for short, and Guaranteed Time Observation. Guaranteed Time, or GTO, is given to scientists that help develop the hardware and software needed to make the telescope come to life. This reserved time will make up 16% of JWST's observation time over the first three cycles, so the first three full years of science. For cycle 1, 2,200 scientists or science institutions from 41 countries have submitted proposals for GO constituting roughly 6,000 hours of JWST prime time, meaning exclusive time to observe a specific target, and more than 1,200 hours of shared time. There's a PDF with abstracts of the 286 GO proposals you can produce at your leisure. Or you can use the website to categorize them and look at those areas of science that interest you the most. If you look at the proposals, you will see that time on MIRI is going to be a very desired commodity because it is planned to be used in half of all Cycle 1 observations. More than half of those will be medium resolution spectroscopy, with MIRI's imaging capabilities making up between a quarter and a third in comparison. Why is spectroscopy so important for astronomy? Well, with it you can find out what the thing that you're looking at is made of even when it is thousands of light years away. One example is exoplanets. The way they are usually discovered is when they pass in front of their star. With spectroscopy of a high enough resolution, scientists can determine what chemical elements make up the atmosphere of an exoplanet, provided it has one. This is actually a use case present within the proposals. In fact, exoplanets make up a large portion of what is going to be investigated through the General Observer Program, right after galaxies. GTO has a bit different categories, but even there, exoplanets make up a large portion of what scientists want to observe. 
Of the 70 proposals regarding exoplanets in GO, 17 have the term atmosphere or atmospheric in their title. So we can expect to see quite some interesting discoveries regarding exoplanet atmospheres of the web's first year of science. And some of those proposals include the TRAPPIST system, which is expected to have quite a few planets within the Goldilocks zone where life might be possible. So maybe we can see that one of those planets has an atmosphere, and not only that, but has oxygen in that atmosphere. So maybe life as we know it could be possible there. There are also observations planned for protostars, quasars, supermassive black holes, galaxy clusters, brown dwarfs and many other things that will expand our understanding of the cosmos. But JWST will not only look into the far reaches of the universe. 22 observations in GO and 18 in GTO aim to give us more insights into our own solar system. From the outer planets to comets to trans-Neptunian objects and also asteroids. Alright, that's a brief glimpse into Webb's first year of science, Cycle 1. And it is already really, really exciting. But what about Cycle 2 and 3 and beyond? Those are not decided yet. As far as I could tell, there was not even a deadline announced for Cycle 2 proposals. And I can understand why. If the launch or deployment had not gone successful, why bother with doing all the work for something you wouldn't even be able to perform anyway? So when will the science gathering for Cycle 1 begin? Well, first the instruments need to be calibrated. This will take a while, since all four instruments offer a wide range of capabilities and NASA needs to make sure everything works correctly before letting the science community loose onto JWST. But so far everything with Webb has been working perfectly. From the super precise launch on Ariane 5 to the immensely intricate and complex deployments. Therefore I have high hopes for the engineers to get everything up and running. And then the data will come in. As I said in the beginning, all the information regarding what the James Webb Space Telescope will look at in its first year of science is publicly available on the Space Telescope Science Institute website. And the great thing about all of this is that the raw observation data will also be publicly available after an exclusive access period to give the scientists that proposed a certain investigation time to publish their results. So if they missed some alien civilization on the faraway exoplanet, maybe your eyes can spot it as soon as the data is available. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.